Episode 83, Toledo Jeep Fest. I am so tired of people saying age is only a number. That is stupid. It is obviously a word. Yeah, just sit back because this episode is going to be a rough one. All right, sit back, relax, shut up, get a snack. Set the recliner for full recline. The 10-minute off-road podcast is about to begin. Hello, welcome to the 10-Minute Off-Road Podcast. I'm your host, Nikki G. I'm here to inform, entertain, and delight your ear holes with all things off-road for the next 10 minutes or so. Why 10 minutes? Because that's how long it's going to take the guy at the bowling alley to clean my shoes. I got stinky feet. I'd like to remind you, you can listen to the 10-Minute Off-Road Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Overcast, Breaker, CastBox, Pocket Cast, Public Radio, Radio Public, and Stitcher. But never iHeartRadio or Pandora because they are pricks. Someday I'm going to do that all in one breath. You can contact the 10-Minute Off-Road Podcast at 10MinuteOffRoad at gmail.com. That's 10MinuteOffRoad at gmail.com. Or you can leave a comment on our various social media platforms with uh, YouTube probably being about the most popular. We have a YouTube channel, uh, the 10-Minute Off-Road Podcast. You youtube channel or my own youtube channel nick g Uh, don't google nicky g it brings up some weird chick speaking of which you can follow the 10 minute off off off-road podcast and be ignored by the 10 minute off-road podcast on instagram facebook and youtube sometimes twitter but never ever ever tiktok and tiktok is nowadays is just getting a little too outrageous all right, so as of this recording, about a week ago, I just I went up to the uh, Toledo Jeep Fest, had a great time there, met uh, a couple of friends that I met previous years at uh, Toledo Jeep Fest, and some people I met in Texas were up there, and you know, Toledo's a, is kind of a far away drive from Texas, which uh, these guys came from all over the United States, some so yes, you know, some some were kind of local and some weren't. Uh, now I'm North Carolina. It took me about a 12-hour drive up there. Google Maps said it would be a seven-hour drive, so I've planned about eight-hour drive, and it, it turned into a nightmare. But if you haven't been to the Toledo Jeep Fest, uh, I recommend you go if you're into the Jeep thing. If not, you know, if you're just into other off-road vehicles still go because you know a lot of overlanding and off-road stuff is universal even though you know jeeps are a specific brand but it, it's it's fun to go i have a quasi jeep being a jeep cherokee so i i consider myself a jeep guy although i'm not into wranglers too much but i gotta tell you last time i went to Texas, I saw a guy wheeling an old CJ7, I believe it was a 7, bone stock, and that that thing did incredible stuff that makes me want to get a Wrangler. I don't want to get the new plasticky ones because I, although I do love Jeeps, I hate making payments. The only thing in my price range is something old and decrepit. Maybe someday. I'm thinking about future builds. I've... Got my Jeep right about where I want it, except my overheating issue is still a slight problem. But it's only a problem two months out of the year. rest of the year, it's fine. But anyhow, that's a rabbit hole we'll go down some other day. Back to the Toledo Jeep Fest. Got a few interesting facts. You can go online and find all this stuff if you're interested in it. But off the top of my head, it's held in Toledo, obviously, early August every year. It's hosted by Jeep Salantis and the city of Toledo. And they put on a good show. They they cord off a couple of city blocks and have just Jeeps displayed everywhere. There's a big show and shine. They have a parade of about, last year when I went, I want to say it was 2,000 Jeeps. This year is probably more. Uh, the parade is awesome because these they are people and... They stop in the middle of the parade and they they'll stack jeeps up and they'll put on a show and it's 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 a lot of fun to see. Takes a couple of hours. Uh, me with my ADHD lost 
interest very quickly and started walking around looking for food because food is always interesting to me. Uh, there's about 60,000 people attended it, attended, if that's a word, this year, raising about $5.1 million in revenue for the city of Toledo. And they did not think to share any of that with me. Uh, the parking for it, uh, you would think it would be kind of bad, but a friend of mine that was there, she just let us in on a little tip. Uh, you sign up for the show and shine, and you and then you park your Jeep there in the show and shine area, and that pretty much pays for your parking, and you get parking right there at the event. I parked a little bit off-site, Pay ten dollars a day for the parking. It wasn't too hard. It wasn't too bad of a walk. It was just, I'd say, about a quarter of a mile walk to to get to the event. Bad part was is even though I took a, a screenshot or took a picture of the street sign where I was at, I was on a corner. Of blah blah blah. I still couldn't find my car when I was ready to go. And I spent about 20 minutes wandering around downtown Toledo looking for my vehicle. Finally found it, got on my way. I wasn't worried. Uh, I knew in the general vicinity where it was. I counted the sponsors of the Toledo Jeep Fest, and it was exactly 100 sponsors. And their sponsors... A lot of them were off-road. A lot of them were automotive and overland-related. Uh, some of them were weird ones like Leaf Guard gutters. And, uh, of course, the Armed Forces were there. A couple of local restaurants. and, and, and But it's, it's good to get a, a, a big sponsorship behind you because it, it, it just tells me that the whole city of Toledo was into making this a pleasurable experience. I counted 39 vendors, but I swear there's more than that. There's vendors from anywhere from overlanding rooftop tents to RV boxes like you put in your in the back of your pickup trucks and stuff. Anything to shackles, to pocket knives. There, there was there was a lot of vendors there selling their stuff. Uh, I I just went for the day on Saturday. A couple of people said that on Sunday. The vendors are ready to wheel and deal instead of packing the stuff up. At the Glass City Convention Center, which was like at the center of uh, the show, they had a, quite a few Jeeps. Uh, you know, I counted them, but I lost count, or I can't remember the count. But I, I want to say off the top of my head, 80 Jeeps, all kinds of Jeeps. Classic from the, the flat fenders from the military some things that the uh, Jeep made for the military that don't even look like Jeeps. A couple of old uh, military ambulances. Some Jeeps that were for the forestry service and fire departments. And then there was a couple of concept Jeeps and then privately owned Jeeps that people built for show. Uh, LS swap. Couple of I saw a couple of LS swap Jeeps. You know, even a Jeep hearse, which kind of sounds morbid but that was there last year too uh, i didn't take a lot of pictures because i took pictures last year and this all the pictures kind of look carbon carbon copied of this year i didn't really see anything new but they had a base camp overland i won't say exhibition but uh, that's where i stayed last year when i went there i spent the night i, I just brought a ground tent with me and they had the uh, one of the metro parks that is real close and it's it's about a half mile quarter mile walk from this park to downtown to the event last year they had a overlanding section for jeeps with the rooftop tents and overlanding type and then they had a place for people that were ground camping and so i stayed there last year i was the only person that ground that stayed in the ground tent there's about a dozen people in the uh, overlanding section, and I talked to them, had a good time. Uh, this year, I want to say there was about 40 spots for overlanding, and a friend of mine that stayed there said that they said they sold out, but he didn't see that it was sold out. So people obviously bought tickets and did couldn't make it. They have free concerts. Uh, this year it was Scotty McCreary and Jeremy Rowe gave free concerts. Uh, 
I don't know if they got paid for their things. If they didn't, thank you for your time. Uh, if the event paid for it, I don't see how they could because this a mission to get into this was free. You just walk right in there. You know, just there was there were there weren't no tickets or nothing. Maybe they got it from the uh, vendors paying for their tables. I don't know how much that costs, but hmm, maybe we'll look into that for next year. All right, that's about all the time I have for this week. Uh, stay tuned for next week where I talk about the Great Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion that's coming up this week. And then the podcast after that, I'm going to talk about the adventures I had getting to each event. Although I haven't gone to the Great Smoky Mountain Invasion yet, I'm planning on a nice uh, adventure for the way up there. All right, until next time, this is Nikki G saying we what you got and be happy.